very shortly because I don't think you should be voting on policy that we have to live with next year. I mean, no. well, if you're going to yeah. quit, if, if you quit this year, then. They gave one year's notice, so the, the end of the fiscal year that you're talking about would be March or February of 2019, not 2018. Wow, but if I agree with you. By the agreement, isn't that what we're talking about? The agreement, that's what we're right. going by, right? Yep. So it would be February of 2019 that they would be done. Right. Well, but it also means they have to pay their due share for I next think, year's. I think they already understand they're paying their taxes right. next year. We're just here to discuss. We're not right. trying to. Well, I think they understand that when they wrote the letter, they understood that. Well, that's why we're to find out. They, you know, they it wasn't our hopes help. to back out. It was our hopes to get things ironed out. Well, I'm just discussing the letter I got. You know, it says you want to quit in the middle of the year. My opinion is that that just makes it harder budgeting-wise. It just makes it a lot simpler. Either you quit in February of 2018 or February of 2019, whichever. I mean, it's better in the middle of the year. Well, as far as I'm concerned, and I don't know if Larry concurs with this, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Do we get in the fiscal year? We've gotten advice from the lawyer that that could happen. Okay, so that's not a big issue. Um, and I concur with Larry. This wasn't something that was done lightly. Okay. Okay, but the more we tried, the more obstacles we were hitting. So this is going to make us do something. And to ask us to leave, that's not going to happen. Well, sure. There's nothing in this agreement, in this fire board agreement, that says. If you're going to withdraw, your board members have to leave. So Larry and I aren't going anywhere. The only, only reason I was saying that is if you re, if you pull out February of 18, which is only four months away, if it's going to be another whole year, then that's fine because you'll be here to live with the consequences for a whole year. But if you're going to leave in three, you know, four or five months, then you shouldn't be setting policy or voting on policy that we have to live with. Did you read the letter? No, we have from to August be here 1st to, to August 1st. I understand that. Okay, so don't, what are you talking about February for? That's the end of the fiscal year. Well, we're not going anywhere, and I don't think okay. that Colbex will argue with doing it how you feel this read. It can be taken both ways. Well, I, that's why we're here to find out what Colbex, you know, I mean, I just don't think in the middle of the year is the way to do it. So, we, you know, it either needs to be February. 18 or 19, not October 1st. That's my opinion. For well, budgeting reasons. According to the agreement, it has to be at least a year anyway, so yeah, yeah. we ain't leaving in three months. All right. No, we're not going in. Now, um, just to get a little bit off, not off subject, the same subject, but has all the Colfax really been informed that they're losing fire protection no. and police coverage? Everybody yeah. received a letter. Yes. Everybody in and not are losing police service. Not we police service, I'm sorry. I'm really I misquote myself. I meant ambulance service. You don't still get ambulance yeah. service because we pay one mil. Okay. Oh, you do? Okay, I understood okay. that if you lose fire protection, you lose... Uh, no. You're talking about EMT. Correct. Right. Right. First responders from the fire department, they will lose not ambulance service. Ambulance okay. service is a common. Yeah, that comes kind of... Right. But what I'm getting at is the other night we had an accident at Arbor Farms. Okay, right on the four corners. 20 minutes, we had the rescue unit from here to there. 40 minutes, we had the first police officer. 45 minutes, we had an ambulance. Does everybody in Colfax Township realize this is going to cost life? This is not just something to take lightly. And to think that Lily Township and that Crystal Valley is going to be able to cover all of Colfax is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I mean, we have a big business there. There's a pig farm there. There's a sawmill there. It, we really need to be looking at this. It should have been brought to us not after it was voted on and after it was signed. It should have been brought to us beforehand. I'm just uh, I'm just asking the question because I mean I would think if I if I lived in Colfax Township I'd be very very concerned. First of all, for the whole time that we're with fire department for this year and a half or so that we're talking okay. about, you will have coverage. Everyone still has exactly what they've had in and Colfax's township really wants this worked out. We don't want to leave. That, I don't want people to get scared. We don't want to leave. What we want is accountability and the freedom of information that we request. That's what we want. And we got it stagnated. And, and I'm not, I'm not, we so, can work on that stuff. That's what we have yeah. to work. I'm not 
complain about that at all. I'm concerned that the fire coverage in Fairfax Township. I have 240 employees working at a plant. We probably have the biggest incidents for EMT coming out there of anywhere in Col we do in Colfax Township. And I mean, we have them coming out there. And to say that we're willing to just do that without even discussing it, you know, just we get a, we get a phone call after the vote saying uh, it's done. You know, that was that to me was a little bit. It's been two years Vince, of discussion about the financial mess that this town uh, fire department is in. This yeah. was not something that hasn't been discussed. I don't understand, understand the financial. Wait till public yeah. Comment, please. But I understand that, that there is more going on here that we need to discuss. Everybody understands that. We're moving toward that direction. We're getting to where we need to get. We're not there. We're getting there. Though. We're headed in that direction. It's something that we all didn't know about. We know that there was funds that were not transferred when they were supposed to be transferred. We had people on the board that were there at that point and knew it wasn't done. But they're acting like nothing ever got done. It just didn't get done. Jerry Frick didn't have the authority to transfer funds at all. That was done by other people. And things didn't get happen. It was his responsibility to make sure it got done, and it did. I think that's really the bottom line that we're all looking at. Well, I think um, another thing we're looking at is, uh, you know, a lot of this uh, temperament between the board and the administration has been. They the last the last board hired Mr. Cameron to do the books. Mm -hmm. He's a professional. He mm -hmm. does other fire departments. He will not do a haphazard job. Right. So when he starts requesting stuff that he needs to do to finish his job, and he can't get it, ask Mrs. Wade, whoever else to get it, she can't get it, then tension what starts. What is it that we're not getting right now? Well, it's coming, but it, it's that's what's happened in the past, is that it just caught, creates a lot of tension. I and then we go, the auditor has to turn, the, the accountant has to turn everything into the auditor. There's certain things that requested for the audit that didn't come. We had to talk and talk and talk and sure. months and months to get them. And so in the really meantime, good. tensions rise, things sure. will happen, people start accusing people of stuff. Absolutely. So if people would just get what they need, turn over what we need, it would be over with. But last, that's not happening. Right. So you meeting. can't, you can't, yeah, I understand. Sure. you cannot say that it's somebody's fault on the board because they're, I'm not saying most of the stuff right. that she's requesting, I know what you're thinking, it's coming from the column or the auditor that they need mm -hmm. to do their job. Right. They're not getting it. Well, and the idea is that it's got to quit being a witch hunt and start being that we're fixing it. It's not a witch hunt. We're actually moving in the direction. We're How do you to consider a witch hunt when you got people when you got a professional accountant asking for information that he needs to finish the job? How is that a witch hunt? As far as I know, the accountant's getting his information he needs. Now, I've only been on this board for a few months. Lately, you, yeah, guys, you guys have been here a lot longer than me. I mean, you're seeing a lot more of it. I've only seen it for a couple of months walking in. And walking in, it, it's, it's ridiculous. Last year, I thought we were going to have a fist fight in a damn meeting. we got to stop this, guys. It's not necessary at all. Mr. Chair, I have a comment. The letter that was sent out, the letter that was sent to the electorate, Colfax. I have one very, very large concern with all of it, at least, but it was a 90% of everything in there, and I want to know where the facts are. There's allegations been made against members of this department, and I don't see any facts to back it up. I see a lot of personal emotion. I see a lot of personal innuendo. I see a lot of personal vendetta, but I do not see any facts of it. I want this to stop. If we present facts that there's an employee doing something they shouldn't, this board will take care of it. But otherwise, it's got to stop. Jerry Frick doesn't do line item over expenditures. We do as a board. We approve the bills. If you don't want it spent, we have to tell him so. We set the policy. We approve the bills. It's not Jerry Frick, it's not Greg Frick, it's not the rest of the department. It is at this table. Why is that the witch hunt, sir? That is what's going on, is when you put in here in a letter that says, if Jerry Frick is gone, if Greg Frick is gone, we'll think about coming back. When you put in here 25 bullet points that will never be approved until you can at least talk about the two that we absolutely need for this department, which is 
monthly meetings and hiring an accountant. The October 25th meeting of the townships at Elbridge is when the townships put together that they wanted those two things. This board did that. This board created policies after that meeting. This board went out and hired an accounting firm, which everybody seems happy with the accounting firm because it's what we really have needed since 2001. Why does this always come back to be Jerry Frick and Greg Frick? That's why it's a witch hunt because it always comes back to them. And if we want to get started, ma'am, I would like to ask you a question. Why did you bring in catalogs and make a copy instead of doing that's what the board asked? That's, not about, that's not about this. You're right, it's not. Okay. But it does affect I know, but that's, what's going on. I know, but that's not what we're yeah. really about. But this letter is not made up of facts. It's made up of emotions. That's what I'm extremely upset about. We're here to discuss facts and set policies for the department. Why can't we get to that point and do that and leave all this personal emotion and personal venues at home? Yeah, but this has got to change. I mean, that's, but, you know, this is true, but this still, that you're getting off point, you're getting off point here, that we're here to talk about the timing and the fire agreement and the timing of the withdrawal and that. There's other stuff that led up to this, yes, but that's not what we're doing. I, I, to say that Mr. Frick refused to live within a line item budget. No. That's false. Absolutely false, because he doesn't have it. Doesn't do anything with it. But, so, I, I mean, again, are we looking to, Ms. Colfax looking to change the date to coincide with the agreement to be at the fiscal year? You want me to answer that? I think that's something their board needs to take back. Well, you know, or you've got to go back to the yeah. According to the attorney, the Arctic the uh, line I, the line you read is ambiguous in nature, and his comment was that it could be read either way, as you said, Wayne. It could be read <coughs> that it's at the end of the fiscal year, um, 2018, or it can be read that during the fiscal year you can um, turn that in. So. Whichever way the board determines, Wayne, will be acceptable with it. All right. Well, the only thing I was am concerned about is how much money then will Colfax, if you're going to October, will prorate or, it. Right. Will prorate it. Okay. And so, but we need to know that in yeah. the next couple of months. So, for budgeting reasons. Well, Sandy could give you them figures. Well, I'm just saying we're going to need that for budgeting reasons if that's how it's going to end. Because you're going to, you know, at that time, then fire protection is gone because as of second, you didn't pay any money. So, correct? Correct. Okay. I mean, that's so. But we need to know that number as early as possible for because we need to start working on a lot slimmer budget. <laughs> Good luck. I know. I know. That's where it comes. <laughs> I just want to reiterate, Wayne, that when I look at it's a letter that was sent out, okay? And I understand it sounds personal, that's fine. I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is just what you are. We need to know what we're gonna work with budget-wise, we need to live within them means, and it's gonna mean not just us living within the means of the line item budget, but holding our fire department within that line item budget. And, and we have to know the figures to be able to work it out. Yeah, we have those now coming in every month, and I think... Yeah, I mean, cameras are being really careful, and we do have line items that are going over. Right, right. and we need to address them either this month. I mean, it's... I mean, it's Nobody can this. move this line item money. It's subject. Well, that's for it. No, it has to go back to the incorporating no, units to move not. the money. Well, no. That, no. Look at your signed budget that you have on the last page that all four entities signed saying you have to go back to the incorporating units. And I seen it when I looked at the budget. So when we need to move money around, we need to tell them to get together and we need to tell them where we need it moved. Well, that's going to take a little longer, so we need to get yeah, after Yeah, so we need to get busy. <laughs> we need exactly. to get after it about two weeks when we have a meeting. Okay. And I know everybody has a signed budget. And on that page, 
all four entities signed that they would do that, including Mr. Frick, Mr. Wade, um, Mr. Porter, yeah, is that right? Mr. Porter and Mr. Herman. So it's signed. We have got to have them incorporating units get together and we've got to give them some figures so they understand. That's our job. Can we help you guys? This year's a semi-watch, for sure. We didn't ask you to come here. They don't have to be asked. Hey, hey. No, 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 John. No, no. I'm just, that's what I'm going to, who asked you to be here? For sure, it's your blessing. Love the chair. Thank you, we appreciate you coming. So, tickled it up. Let's make a motion. Can't make a motion. Oh, I, I do have one other question, please. In the letter that was sent out to the electric, there is a comment in here that in July of 2016, the fire department was notified by Mr. Corey Vaughn, the state treasurer, that they may be audited for inappropriation of funds if that action wasn't taken to solve this problem. This was for fiscal year 2015-2016. I'm asking for that letter. You so answer it. That's why I'm asking for that letter, because that statement is wrong. That is not what was said. May I answer that? Because I made that statement? <coughs> she didn't write that statement. I did. May I answer it, Wayne? Well, we got, like I said, we need to see the letter, if that's the case. Well, all I'm letter. asking for is I want to see the letter. Number one, we have seen the letter that there was concern concerning the budget. Number two, I talked to Mr. Corey Vaughn personally on two different occasions concerning that. And the issue was that they were running over on line items, way, way over on line items. And so to him, he said to me, that was misappropriation of funds. All right, well, so that's another one of them, uh, how do you read the line, huh? Because, uh, you know, the board last year, when ran over at the end of the year, we did the uh, moving money around at the end of the year, not when the line ran over. We did it in the year, just like Leather Township does there. Because the person who was doing our books and stuff was from Leather Township and, from two years ago, and that's how they did it. At the end of the year, you do your line item adjustments, as long as you cut not out of the budget total amount, you just moved it around. Then, as of last year, or this past year, and oh, we can't do that no more. So that's been part of this whole bullshit. It's been part of changing things that's done for how many years, and it's hard to do. But, you know, the year before, we, at the end of the budget year, okay, this line's over, we moved the money on, we still had got out of the budget, Still had money. It's just one line here had five thousand, and this one was two thousand short. So we moved it over here, moved it over here. But uh, so, and as of this past year, then, oh, now it's well, we can't do that anymore. Just like what you said, it's got to go back to the townships now to let them do it. So that's a little hard to change something that you've done. Can I comment on that? Yeah. Um, I did call the state on that, and you're both right. You can do it by having all the authority get together, or he said 99% of the departments don't wait till the end of the year to do it. They do it at the meeting. Like if you have a line item that's over and you have to move money, you make on a, you, uh, do it immediately. you do it immediately at that meeting, uh, uh, an amendment to the budget, and get it done. But he said that the good thing about doing it that way is instead of waiting to the end of the year like you suggested, was that you get to see where you're taking the money out of and instead of at the end of the year, bam, all of a sudden you have no money nowhere. And, and this way you can look at it and keep it oh, I'm not tally on. I'm not opposed to that, that's fine. I mean, yeah, I'm not, but that's what I, I was I really to think do. taking it back to the town, the four entities is just dragging it out and uh, just a zoo. Yeah. Same problem, I think if the board has a budget from, I mean, I've been on state budgets for the home builders and stuff. You have a budget. That is our money to do what we do with. As long as we stay in that budget. The total budget. 
Correct. You know, it's no different than the county. The county gives the road commission the money, the county, they give whoever money, and it's up to that group of people to spend that money as they see fit. Instead of having all this micromanagement crap, this board says policy for the administrator, the fire chief, that's what this board is supposed to do, set policy. Them two people are supposed to do what we tell them. They're our employees, they're our foremen, however you want to look at it. Then when they don't do what they're told, then that's, you know, penalties after that. But this board shouldn't be micromanaging every damn aspect of the fire department. That's not what a board does. But that's, again, that's getting off point. We're here to discuss, you know, just take care of this other problem. But, you know, that's my thing. It just, the board sets the policies. You leave them go. You know, we tell them what they can spend money on. And that's what you do. You don't every day manage a thing. I mean, if you did that at your plant, see if we get well, away at the in, in, in regards to Jim's comment too on saying that Mr. Frick cannot go over a line item, that is not true. Well, he knows how much is in a line right. item. When it's getting close, he needs to come to the board before he's way over. Right. And and we have to. And make we're sure. going to have to be more strict on that in the future because. All of a sudden, we're going way over on these line items, and then it's coming to the board's attention that we're way over, and, and then he, we're in trouble. He gets the same copy so as we do. He knows no, how much, he doesn't. He he knows how much, no, he doesn't. He knows how much is in He's not on the mailing list of our stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He does get a copy of the budget. I made sure that Cameron sent him every month. When we do get your list of what we're going to pay, he gets the new updated budget with how much percentage is left. Yes, he does, because I was there when she sent it. He is our administrator. He should know that. I agree and with you. And he gets a copy so. of all the invoices. Right. But again, we're, I mean, I realize these are no, some of the problems. Right. Mm -hmm. These are the problems that have caught came to this. That's why Colfax is upset. So we right. need to handle I mean, them and, right. and straighten them out. Or strengthen them or do whatever we're right. doing. However you want to call it. And okay. again, we need to, I mean, again, the line item stuff, we need to keep, and if Mr. Hermans is right that we can do that, then then we need to do that. We need to know at the next at the next meeting in two weeks that, okay, we've got these lines that are getting closed or are over, then we need to address them. Not, like you said, not wait for three or four months. But, and then if that's part of the problem. But, I mean, but again, this is something that this board has to be more vigilant about, but that's not like this meeting, special meeting. I mean, that's, we need to just go down. If this is agreed that, that this is what's going to happen about, you're going to pull out in February of 20, or at the calendar year that you've got, you know, that's what, I guess that was my point. That's one of the big things I, you know, we just need to know how much money we're going to have next year so we can start setting the budget. So if we're going to get 80% or 70% or whatever that total amount is, we need to know that as soon as possible. Sandy will be able to give you. Well, we need to have that, you know, but even by next month, there are meetings, right? Oh, I was just saying I agree with, uh, you know, we need to stay right on top of this stuff and not let it get out of hand. May I make a comment about not getting out of hand? Yeah. Okay, one of the things that we're up against is that we are knowing after the fact when some of this money is being spent, okay? And that's one of our problems. Because in our fire board agreement, as a fire board, and Jim gave us the policy at the last meeting, okay, it needs to come to us and be approved before it can be purchased, other than an emergency like the truck breaks down and they gotta have it for today. But that's not happening right now, and that will help our budget a lot, okay? And purchase orders are fine. He brought it up at the last meeting, we, that's the things we've got to start being diligent with because then, then there won't be any rumors out there. We'll have black and white proof. And I think it's, again, it's getting better, but it's like pulling teeth, you know, it's a little painful. I mean, <laughs> no, it's worse than painful. Well, it just takes yeah. time to change. I mean, yeah. when you want to change something that's been done one way for a long time, it's hard to do. I mean, it's just but I think everybody needs to cooperate, like Jim said. I mean, there can't be that attitude of, or, you know, I've never done it this way, well, guess what? Well, it is what it is. It is what it is. Well, we have a hard road to follow. I mean, we're, we're going to have to do some serious cuts to keep this fire department going. 
And, you know, the, the last meeting that we had, we couldn't even get our administrators to, to bow down and, and give a little on a magazine subscription. So if we can't give on a magazine subscription, how are we going to get anywhere with the rest of it? I mean, that's, that's the whole thing. We've got to work at it, and we don't know what can be cut and what can't because we're not firemen. We're not here. We don't know what can be done without what is needed, what is absolutely needed. We don't know. It's Priority. Right. Vince said it really well a couple of minutes ago. We need our EMT. Okay? But if we don't cut the rest of the budget in every place we can afford to cut, I it does jeopardize I, so, I do understand yeah. that we're going to have it. And yeah. It's going to come and a point it's, come all, to that. it's not just <coughs> all of Louisiana County. We're all dealing with Everybody. the same problem. You know, it's going to hurt. Yeah. I don't care. To, yeah. It's going to hurt. But that's that's for a regular meeting. Yeah. So I guess yeah. then if the attorney said it's okay to do it in one year, I mean, we can ask, but I hate to spend money to ask. Because <laughs> that attorney is like reading the Bible, you know. Everybody reads it and come out with 17 different uh, opinions. So, yeah. Can we not just do it in the next fiscal year, which would be March of 20? No. Okay. Let's have a vote, Wayne, on whether you want to accept the 12 months from the date on the letter or whether you want to make it March of 